Wednesday, May 29th. We're doing this on a Wednesday. It's been the beginning of summer and things are changing. Yeah, yeah. Well, this works better for both of our schedules right now. Um, also, I got a little bit more time to uh, think about details uh, that take a little more research uh, rather than just stuff off the top of my head. Because it's summer? Because it's summer. So I, I lose a, time when it becomes... My, my kids are younger. Bit more focus. Um, you know, I'm out of school. I'm not teaching right now. Right. So uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, our uh, evolutionary background and when we don't live the way we were evolved to do, uh, how we then treat that medically. So we evolved out in the Serengeti, getting tons of exercise, not eating any uh, simple sugars, only complex sugars. Uh, we would binge on protein periodically and not eat any sugars for a while. And then we would eat just roots and raw roots that were difficult to digest. So we had very little uh, in the way of insulin spike uh, responding to uh, you know glucose rises. Uh, and at the same time, we were getting tons of exercise. We're walking over six miles a day. We're digging. We're running to things. All of these things were what we were evolved to, uh, how we were evolved to live. And as modern Americans, we don't do that. We're lazy. We like to sit around. We love the tasty food. We, we like our, our cheeseburgers. We like um, high uh, cholesterol foods. We like uh, fatty foods with lots of triglycerides. And we like sugary foods that uh, boost the uh, blood sugar. And we're sick because of this. And so various... We're, we're sick because of the delicious things. And, and our lack of exercise, that, that, that combination. Uh, and so, you know, you hit about 50 years old and suddenly your cholesterol's through the roof and your blood sugar starts going up and you see the doctor and they t start recommending things that you do. And so what are these things? These are things that will get you back on track medically to do what you should be doing in your life. But many of us can't do the lifestyle changes necessary. If you want to lower your cholesterol, you can radically increase your exercise, decrease your um, uh, particularly uh, red meat contents, uh, but anything with cholesterol in it. We can make our own cholesterol, but if you actually stop eating meat, your your cholesterol will go down. Is this something that you... is? If you do this earlier in life, will it affect you later in life? Or this is just a thing you have to do continuously throughout life? I would say continuously throughout life, but it seems to be more important as you get older. Um, in many cases, uh, particularly exercise, uh, not just as a habit to start earlier in life, but we talked about it in osteoporosis mm -hmm. as something that you build up uh, ability early in life so that you can do it later in life. Uh, you know, generally stamina, strength, all these things you need to build early in life. Yeah. Later in life is when you really need to have done those things. And if you don't do, didn't do them, now is when you have to start, but it makes it much more difficult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so mm -hmm. that if you don't have the energy, it's more difficult to exercise. You know, starting off with smaller things and working up definitely does work well. All the studies out there show that even small amounts of exercise can have tremendous benefits. But... To try and get up to hunter-gatherer levels of exercise <laughs> is going to be really, really difficult. You know, you literally should be walking at least six miles a day, which almost none of us do. I don't even see how that's possible. It's, it takes a significant amount of time. It, it, all of these things are going to be taking a lot of your time. Uh, I mean, just the 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 <laughs> the sheer amount of vegetables you eat, you should you should be eating um, essentially raw as much as possible to slow down their <laughs> absorption. You're just going to be either chewing or walking all of your time, which is what we evolved to do. Just sitting there, just chewing roots and vegetables this is, this and walking all day, every day. I can day. definitely say I am resistant to the way we have evolved. I do not want to be doing that. And and, and that's what we evolved for as well. We, we evolved to not want to do these things. We evolved to eat the delicious food because that's the stuff that gets the most fat. And we really, really want fat. And we evolved to avoid exercise because exercise is costing us calories and we evolved to maximize our calorie storage so we always have enough fat for our giant brains. So our giant brains are telling us to not do the things that are healthy for us uh, and telling us to sit around and, you know, watch TV and eat potato chips. So, um, you know, we, we, we all can fight this a little bit and any kind of, uh, you know, improve, improving of diet, less, less simple sugars uh, and uh, more exercise. All of these things are going to help you incrementally. But it's still a high bar. It's yeah. a really yeah. high bar for all of us. And so, you know, letting ourselves off the hook a little bit, what happens? 
we end up, as I mentioned, going to the doctor and the doctor starts prescribing some, some medications. I mean, when I hit, when I hit 50, the doctor literally said to me, you're 50 now. So there's things we need to talk about. Exactly. It's just that. It's a trigger. It's it's, it's just a trigger. And, and, and it, and it really does seem to happen at that time. So your, your triglycerides start going up, your, your bad cholesterol goes through the roof, your uh, glucose levels start going up and all of these things are bad for you for so this really obvious reasons. So this is happening to everyone, is what you're saying. This is happening to everyone, uh, some more than most, certainly Americans more than most, because we're sort of at the forefront, the cutting edge of not exercising and eating lots of sugar. Yeah, uh, that's and white flour. And, and, and we're now refined spreading foods. this yeah. to the rest of the world. Um, you know, I don't know if we're a neocolonial power in that sense, but our sort of soft neocolonialism is one of... of uh, cultural spread, and with our cultural spread comes these other other problems. Uh, and so this this is American culture in particular, but it's becoming world culture. Uh, and so one of the things that we particularly treat uh, these problems with is uh, statins. So statins uh, actually reduce the uh, formation of cholesterol in uh, in your uh, liver. And uh, you can reduce your dietary cholesterol, but we make about 70% of our own cholesterol. Yeah, I mean, I know that in my body personally, that, that, that ingested cholesterol did not necessarily translate to serum cholesterol. It, 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 had a, it had a dip and then it came back, even when I was maintaining the your, same diet. Your body can make cholesterol just fine, even if you have a zero cholesterol diet. So if you have an entirely plant-based diet, There'll be no cholesterol in it, and you'll make tons of cholesterol, particularly set from something like potato chips, say. Potato chips have zero cholesterol. They're all plant matter, the uh, uh, you know, plant-based oils in it, but the, the sugars in the, in the potato chips, um, the, the, the starches that are made out of pure glucose, and the fats themselves are going to work together to provide all the things you need to make lots and lots of cholesterol. Oh. And so it doesn't matter if you completely avoid cholesterol. You'll, you can still make it, and your diet can still be bad. You know, and your diet can still be bad in a way that will cause your body to make too much cholesterol. Exactly. I no one ever explain. No one ever explained that to me. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah. So it's um, uh, glucose again is directly related to triglycerides, but it's related to the whole insulin problems. Uh, and uh, you're you're going to be directly uh, making more uh, cholesterol in response. Uh, to a high fat, high sugar diet, even if none, of, if there's zero cholesterol in your diet. So, again, you make about seventy percent of your and, own and cholesterol. It doesn't even need to be high sugar. It could be high carbohydrates, right? That, that could well, still the, get there. The simpler the carbohydrate, the um, the uh, more uh, circulating insulin you're going to have, and the more circulating insulin you're going to have, the more uh, cholesterol you're going to end up with. <laughs> right. So, so yeah, if you're eating raw roots. You're going to have very low uh, uh, circulating uh, uh, insulin, and you're not going to end up with high cholesterol. But since we don't eat raw roots, we eat cooked potatoes. That's going to go directly into high glucose, and it's going to lead to high triglycerides and high cholesterol. So, yes, you can change these things through diet. Even better, you can change it through exercise. Exercise reduces cholesterol, but again, it's going to be really, really difficult. You should be striving for these things on your own regardless. I'm not saying you should just let yourself off the hook and eat potato chips and watch TV. But let's say you've hit 50 because life has been good and you made it that far. Yeah. <laughs> now you have to do something about the lifestyle you have, uh, which is not evolutionarily perfect, but let's say you're doing your best and it's still just not it's quite good enough. still not good enough. Exactly. So uh, the doctor is going to uh, recommend you take statins uh, to control your overall uh, cholesterol. Now... Check. Exactly. So your liver uh, makes statins uh, mostly overnight. Sorry, not make statins. Statins makes cholesterol mostly overnight. And statins inhibit the coenzyme that basically starts that process. So cholesterol is made out of fats, uh, and those fats are modified to become the different kinds of cholesterol, the high cholesterol, sorry, high density uh, lipoproteins and the low density uh, lipoproteins. And so uh, if you slow down the production of all cholesterol by this rate limiting reaction, uh, so you've, you've actually blocked that enzyme, uh, then that's going to have a whole bunch of sort of knock on health benefits. So uh, by slowing down the production, 
of cholesterol. Uh, the statins actually bind at something like 10,000 times the rate of the natural enzyme. So they really interfere with that enzyme's binding. Uh, now you have less cholesterol in your liver. So when your liver doesn't get enough cholesterol, it needs cholesterol. So it actually uh, is going to make um, or allow to be made or pref prefer that some, of, some of the biochemistry is, is not completely clear on this, but it's going to encourage the production of the, the good cholesterol, the high-density lipoproteins. So the, the good cholesterol is the kind of cholesterol that goes to your body and brings fats and triglycerides back to the liver. And so now your liver is hungry for cholesterol because it can't make its own, and so it's actually scavenging it from the rest of your body. So you're getting this sort of extra added benefit of not having uh, overall levels of cholesterol, and now your body is switched into a metabolism that is going to decrease the bad cholesterol taking fats from your liver and increasing the good cholesterol taking fats back it's to basic, the level. Basically sending little cannonballs around knocking out the 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 puffy. Well, it's gotten hungry. It's saying bring food to me. Down, yeah. So normally your liver provides you with food. It provides you with your glucose, it provides you with your fat. It's your it's your general storage uh unit. You know, it does some cleaning of the blood as well, but this this very large organ takes up a significant amount of 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 your, you know, region and, uh, you know, below your, your lungs, sort your of internal real estate, your yeah. internal real estate and, and a significant amount of your overall, um, uh, metabolic, uh, costs. It's, yeah. it, it's, it's something like, you know, 10, 20% of your total metabolic wow. issue. A lot of your blood is in your it's liver. Like as big as your brain. It's as big as your brain. Yeah. So you like, you, there's like your muscles, your brain, uh, your heart and liver, uh, and your, your gut. These are the things you do with your body. And so this is one of the main, the main, uh, uses of, blood and energy uh, is your liver. So when your liver gets hungry, it starts scavenging fats and cholesterols uh, from the rest of your body. Uh, and so that's really good. Um, the statins also do some really interesting things uh, in terms of um, overall heart uh, uh, benefits. Uh, it gives secondary effects that benefit your heart because it stabilizes plaques. So uh, if you have high cholesterol, you will have started to form plaques. Plaques are what cause hardening of the arteries. Mm -hmm. It's cholesterol sticking to the side of the artery, which then um, get a sort of fibrous mat over them that uh, holds them in place. And then you actually get white blood cells sticking on that. So the whole thing starts to form uh, permanently uh, sclerotized uh, arteries. And this is what causes, you know, long-term heart issues. Right. But it seems, so therefore the, the volume is reduced. Is reduced. Yeah. So um, these are not going to grow as fast when you have statins because you have less cholesterol. But the other problem with these, with the uh, plaque formation and these sort of blood clots, which is what's actually forming, uh, is that they can break off. Right. They can break off and travel through the body. They can cause strokes. But uh, the most common problem is that they'll get stuck somewhere in your heart, often on another plaque that's already in your heart. So one will break off, stick to the other plaque, and then this whole big lump starts forming inside the arteries of your heart. This is what we use, um, you know, uh, you'll you put in a stent to open up the blood vessel so your heart can keep working. So uh, the um, statins actually stabilize these plaques. Uh, they stabilize that sort of fibrous network over it. Oh, you mean... Throughout the body. Throughout the body. Uh, they, so that um, these things don't go rogue and get caught in the heart. Exactly. They also lower overall inflammation. L lowering inflammation reduces uh, the potential for plaques to form. Plaques tend to form uh, when there's, uh, uh, you know, a, a narrower uh, artery. You get more turbulence. So you that turbulent flow basically slams molecules against the wall of the artery and they stick. Uh, and so... Um, with uh, lower inflammation, uh, it's actually uh, working on the uh, the uh, nitric oxide uh, things that are related to vasodilation in general. So you're going to have uh, better flow through the heart. Um, it actually improves uh, the endothelium, which I the very speculative. Okay, statins. Statins actually improve your endothelium, which is really weird. Okay, I just don't want to, but not. Yeah. Anyway, right. I just wanted to point out uh, that uh, very much not a medical doctor. I very much am a biological doctor, so <laughs> I, I feel uh, uh, quite uh, able to talk about these things. This is you know totally things I can read the papers very easily and understand them. Uh, but any information I give you, in terms of recommendations for a particular person, 
I am not doing that. I am not a medical doctor recommending a particular medication. But you're just saying there is literature that says there is scientific proof that it does this? There it's- is evidence indicating wow. support for this. And so I just wanted to speculate briefly that thinking about COVID, which uh, really attacks the endothelium, this might be one of the reasons that long COVID is a problem. Because if your endothelium has been damaged or, 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 or is, it has swelling or something like that, this is going to have... Uh, uh, all sorts of issues throughout your body, including in your heart. The endothelium is the, the, the it's the wrapper. Yes. Basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so this, this, this is going to be improving uh, all, all of these functions. You're, you, you could actually end up with uh, slightly more energy um, because of this and, or, or possibly countering what long COVID did. Very speculative, not seeing anything on the literature. I'm just thinking about it because I happen to know two things that affect mm-hmm. the endothelium, mm-hmm. right? We've got COVID is bad for it and, Statins are good for it. So it's interesting to think about it yeah. as, as being good yeah. for it in that, in that sense. Um, in addition, it actually reduces uh, formation of blood clots in general. So it's, it's anti-thrombatic. Uh, mm-hmm. So thrombosis is, 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 is blood clots and swelling. Uh, and uh, this is actually going to reduce uh, the, the formation of uh, platelets and, and clogs. I, I, hate, I hate how I sound like a... Like a- salesperson but it sounds like from what you're saying the earlier in life that you get on this particular drug the better it would be for you i don't know about that i don't know about that but if you're saying that the that these plaques develop as you get older then and these these keep things in place and prevent new plaques from forming that could be and getting on it if there's evidence plaques overall Usually, the 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 symptom of increasing plaque would be increased blood pressure. Uh, I don't think treating things that haven't been a, a problem yet or is a good idea. Um, so you know, yeah, if you were young and you started seeing your blood pressure going up and you noticed your cholesterol going up, yeah, you should treat it early. But if your cholesterol is fine and your blood pressure is fine, I don't think you should treat a problem. No, no, but but I'm just saying, like when you the moment you see a problem, you can start. Yeah, you might not want to 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 muck around too much. Uh, if if this is something where I don't like being on drugs, I'm just saying it sounds. Yeah, no. Like... Once once your cholesterol starts going up, you should yeah. really start thinking about statins for a whole number of reasons. And there's been some very very large uh, gold standard double blind placebo studies showing improvements not just in cholesterol but also in just total longevity. So this will help you live longer, mostly because of the heart improvement. Uh, because you're not forming blood clots, you're not forming uh, uh, arterial sclerosis, you're not getting high blood pressure. All of these things are uh, improved by uh, the statins. Now, I want to talk about... Isn't this like... This is one of the most prescri- prescribed drugs in the United yeah, States. Yeah, there's a reason for the it. There's, 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 and it's been prescribed since, what, the early 50s? It's it's well understood. There's, there's, a, there's a whole number of different kinds of statins, they all pretty much work in the same way, uh, inhibiting this particular enzyme that uh, starts... And do you have any knowledge of what the uh, some of the, the, the side effects... Well, that's what I was, I was yeah, just wanted yeah. to get into, is what are the negative side? Why, do, why don't we just take this from birth? Exactly. Yeah, why not just <laughs> take it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, like a vitamin. One of the problems is what's called the nocebo effect. So a placebo is where you get better from taking a sugar pill. A nocebo effect is when you get worse from taking something that shouldn't do that to you. And so doctors will not tell you about the side effects of statins very often because people experience the side effects of statins at much higher rates if they know about them. <laughs> so it's a nocebo yeah. effect. So uh, if you don't know about the side effects, your, your, your rate of side effects is about 5%. If you do know about the side effects, your rate of side effects is about 20%. So it's much, much worse for you if you know. So spoiler alert, if you are listening, try not to take it to heart too strongly, but I am about to describe what goes wrong. So the the common uh, side effects uh, that one sees from uh, statins are uh, muscle weakness, muscle cramping, uh, and uh, just general muscle pain. Uh, And it's not completely understood how these things happen, but the general hypothesis is that this is due to calcium release. We talked about calcium ions when we were looking into uh, osteoporosis, very tightly controlled in the body. Uh, calcium ions are how uh, nerves 
uh, are, are involved in nerve signaling, uh, ion pumping across the membrane, all these kind of things. And they're also involved in muscle contractions. And so your muscles have calcium stores that uh, are part of the signal that tells a muscle to contract. The statins interfere with this and cause calcium stores to be released. So a big bag of calcium sitting in a muscle cell is suddenly exploded, releasing calcium everywhere, which causes the neighboring muscle cells to contract. When the neighboring muscle cells contract, it makes them more likely to also release calcium. So it's a lot like uh, the way, uh, let's say, lactic acid works in a fatigued muscle. Lactic acid is, is the buildup from uh, anaerobic metabolism. Lactic acid then interferes with the way muscles work and causes further muscle contraction, which is a muscle cramp. It's basically what, what's happening here. So it's going to interfere with overall muscle function. It's going to cause muscle cramps. It's going to cause muscle weaknesses. Uh, it can damage the muscles long term, but that's extremely rare. Uh, that would be with someone who had, um, you know, very, very uh, bad uh, sort of you know, metabolism within their muscles and uh, probably uh, extremely weak muscles to start with. Uh, people with healthy muscles um, contract these muscles a lot. When you contract a muscle, it pumps the muscle. It moves all those things like lactic acid out. Uh, and so it's going to uh, be the number one way to, uh, to fight uh, this sort of side effect is, again, increasing exercise. So even though you're on the statins, you still need to exercise. When, when you're exercising, you're moving the blood through your muscles, it's going to move this calcium out. You're much less likely to suffer uh, muscle cramps or the muscle weakness. Um, however, if you're just sitting there lying in bed all day and you're taking statins and you start to feel weak, what's the last thing you're going to want to do is exercise. Mm -hmm. So there is, there is a little bit of a catch-22 problem I, there. I do, I do have an a anecdotal uh, uh, thing is that when, when I was given statins, my doctor told me to take CoQ10 and I did take CoQ10. He said, take it with it. But by changing the amount that I take and the timing of taking it, I don't experience the side effects that I think I was experiencing. I, I may be treating a nocebo with a placebo. It's really hard to say. Yeah. 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 I so, I so I also am exercising more. So, yeah. So CoQ10 uh, and ubiquitol are uh, enzymes involved with oxidative metabolism. And oxidative metabolism is when it functions correctly, doesn't produce the side effects of muscle fatigue, etc. So by in increasing your um, ability to properly process and oxidize sugars and turn that into ATP energy for your muscles, you're going to have less fatigue, probably less muscle cramping, all of these things. So it will actually treat the problem, but it doesn't treat it directly. It doesn't interfere with this, these calcium uh, releases, the calcium ions in the muscles. It's just improving your muscle ability overall. So to the extent, if CoQ10 works, and a lot of people say it does, um, I don't know as much about this. It's, it's not as easy to understand. In The, the double-blind massive studies haven't been done in the have same way. Have not been done there, yes. Um, it should basically give everyone a little bit of energy. Uh, and so it might well uh, function to, to fight the lack of energy that statins could create. Um, because uh, you need CoQ10 to uh, metabolize any sugar, uh, you know, to metabolize glucose. So any cell that uses energy, which is all of them, have these enzymes in them all the time. So they can't be something you actually have a deficiency of. You're not treating a deficiency by taking CoQ10. Again, again, it could be a placebo. Uh, on the other hand, it might be that you're limiting the rate because you have only a limited amount of CoQ10. By giving a little bit more, you speed up that rate just a tiny bit. Again, this is speculative. You're, you're talking about uh, metabolism across a wide range of things. If there were any place in the body that would need a little bit of extra, you'd expect to find that in your, in your muscles and your brain. The two things that are going to be using a lot of energy all the time, CoQ10 is supposed to help with both of those things. So it improves oxidative metabolism in your brain and your muscles. You get fewer um, uh, oxygen radicals. You have fewer of the things that cause damage. Uh, so basically the whole, the whole process is improved. So I'm not saying CoQ10 is bad. I'm just saying it's a, it might do nothing. It probably does something, and it probably does something that will help you. And we have no proof of any of this except that 
My doctor said take CoQ10 with a statin. People have been recommending CoQ10 for a number of different reasons for over 30 years. Uh, I've heard it particularly for brain health, uh, but this muscle health, it, basically it's going to be working the same way. It's reducing, mm -hmm. it's reducing the, the toxic byproducts of oxidative metabolism and increasing the rate of oxidative metabolism so that you're getting more energy from the mm -hmm. system. So mm -hmm. that's energy for your brain, it's energy for your muscles. You're going to feel better. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> yeah. or maybe it's all a placebo but uh, I, I, I suspect it, it actually helps and that's why your doctor was recommending it yeah um, so these are things you can do but again it's not going to directly affect this calcium buildup problem right uh, the other well, exercise though will exercise will right these are calcium ions that are naturally occurring in your muscles and so you just want to pump them out combining these things yes. as always yes a a a absolutely and, and so you know even if you're on statins if you are eating uh, nothing but uh, fat and sugar, you're still going to end up with high cholesterol. So again, you still need to have better diet and improve your, your exercise. You just don't need to live like a hunter-gatherer. Yeah, I have to admit that when my doctor increased my statins, I was like, I can eat a little more meat now. <laughs> may have been true, but yeah, I, 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 I ha I'm on a very low dose of statins and it's only barely touched my, uh, my, my cholesterol. No, see, everyone's body is different. A low yeah. dose of statins really sent my, my, my cholesterol down. It yeah. Really I'm going did. from taking it every other day to taking it every day, which is what my doctor recommended in the first place. Yes. So oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, uh, doctors have different opinions than yes, I do yes, where yes, I was yes. being a little careful. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a thing of art. Like, it's a thing of art. Exactly. Yeah, Doc being a doctor is a lot like being a cook. There's a lot of science involved, but each time is a single occurrence, right? Every meal just happened <laughs> exactly. once. Exactly. Next time you'll try and do it better. Exactly right. Um, so anyway, this, the calcium uh, isn't just happening in your, uh, in your muscles. It also happens uh, in the uh, Isle of Langerhan in your pancreas. So the Isles of Langerhan in your pancreas are what produce uh, insulin. Uh, and so you actually um, have a problem uh, producing insulin correctly uh, when you're uh, taking statins, uh, and it can lead to type 2 diabetes as a possible uh, side effect uh, as your glucose levels go up. So uh, I think in your case, your doctor also recommended metformin. Yes, because uh, my A1C is slowly creeping up. And is it because of the statins? It's your entire life. Everything is going to be creeping up as you get older, yeah. but the statins aren't going to help. Yeah. So, so your glucose levels are going, going up. Your statins are just going to make this worse. Uh, and so you run into more problems. And so uh, one of the things that doctors then recommend is, is metformin. And so metformin, again, has been around for a really long time. It has relatively few side effects and is generally recommended. Uh, it's been around since uh, it's since the 20s. My, my, my doctor actually said, he said, some of us in the community use this as a supplement. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that because this is this is something that is, is relatively new uh, and um, is, is only just being talked about, uh, like in this last year. Uh, I, I read a paper from April 2024 oh, really? saying that he, this is a brand new idea. He, he said this to me about about four years ago. Right. Four, and so the, the 2024 ago. paper was summarizing the literature where people have been on this idea. So your doctor was actually ahead of the curve. Yeah. And it's seeming like he was right, which yeah, is good. Yeah. Nice to hear your doctor's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's good. Uh, so the metformin uh, is designed to um, uh, control uh, blood glucose. Uh, and it actually also increases insulin sensitivity. So it's the main treatment for type 2 diabetes, uh, lowers blood, glu gl blood glucose while also increasing insulin sensitivity and inhibiting overall uh, insulin levels because if you have higher insulin sensitivity, you don't need as much insulin. So it's, it's tremendously good for you. It's, it was first found in, in, in the 20s. There were a couple different versions of it. Um, I'm not positive about this, but I think that where everything went wrong was FenFen. Uh, I think it was related to a kind of uh, metformin relative combined with some amphetamines, hmm. and it started causing bad effects. I can't remember what they were exactly from the 70s and 80s, but a lot of people had really bad effects, and hmm. so they banned it. And so then it was out of favor for a while. And uh, starting, I think, in the 90s, it, it started coming back into favor as a limited treatment for uh, type 2 diabetes, and then it became well accepted for that. And so the current formulation, not combining it with a stimulant, uh, uh, seems to work really, really well for that particular thing, the type 2 diabetes. But because so many people in this country, because of our American lifestyle, have type 2 diabetes or are, are pre-diabetic, um, 
This means hundreds of thousands of people have been taking metformin and they started discovering that in this formulation, it has a whole bunch of other beneficial effects. So uh, much like statins have a, a range of things they do for you, metformin has a range of things it does for you. Uh, it seems mostly related to uh, lowering glucose. So glucose is a poison and glucose uh, causes oxidation around your body. So glucose ages you. And uh, by reducing the amount of glucose uh, that you take in, uh, you're actually going to possibly lower your aging process. Uh, so it actually uh, slows down the amount of glucose being taken out of your stomach. So you're not getting as many calories from your food. Uh, and so this is going to also help you lose weight. Uh, so even if you are not type 2 diabetic, this will lower your glucose uh, circulating through your body, will lower the damage from the glucose, and start helping you lose weight because you're not absorbing that glucose. Um, this is going to cause uh, sort of benefits uh, throughout the body as you are now no longer storing as much fat uh, because one, you don't have as much glucose in your in your in your um, uh, uh, circulation, so you can uh, you can. I uh, 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 lower the amount of insulin. Uh, insulin tells your body to turn glucose into fat. So with less glucose and less insulin, you're going to be making less fat in your body. Uh, you're going to be uh, able to handle the small amount of glucose that you are getting. Um, it can cause some problems because uh, it will end up with less glucose in your blood less glucose is going to your liver to be stored for energy, that means you have less energy stores in your liver. It doesn't just start on the top end, it also uh, interferes with the release side of things. So your, your um, liver stores glucose as glycogen, this giant molecule with lots of glucoses on it, and when you're hungry or exercising, insulin, uh, uh, sorry, the insulin stops, and um, you're, 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 uh, you, you get um, the... Uh, uh, the glycogen uh, uh, hormone telling you to release uh, the glucose into your blood. And so this gives you the energy when you need the, it. The glycogen is, con is, is converted into glucose in the liver before it is released? So, 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 so insulin tells glycogen to store sugar uh, and holds it mm -hmm. uh, because if it was just stored as glucose, it would be toxic. So mm -hmm. it holds it in a molecule that detoxifies it, essentially. Mm -hmm. And then when you have uh, low blood sugar or exercising, glucagon tells the glycogen, sorry, yeah. I think I misspoke there, yeah. glucagon tells the glycogen to release the sugar. Mm -hmm. uh, that, mm -hmm. That's why you asked okay. me, because okay. I, I, I missed a yeah, word. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah thank yeah, you. Yeah. So, so uh, now you're releasing more sugar back into your system when you need it. Um, the, the metformin is going to interfere with this. It's actually going to uh, lower the amount of glucose that is released. So you're going to have less being stored, less being absorbed, and less being released. Now, Which could cause a cycle of depression of energy, no? Right. So, so while all of this is good for you because glucose in your blood is bad for you, yeah. you need sugar for energy. Yeah. You need blood sugar for energy. So if you're taking metformin, you could easily start feeling tired all the time. Mm -hmm. You're going to start having uh, 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 muscle weaknesses and things that uh, really uh, start to um, uh, make you feel tired all the time. Mm -hmm. And so this could then actually be accompanying the statins where you mm -hmm. have muscle weakness and muscle fatigue mm -hmm. making you really not want to exercise. So this mm -hmm. is this is the the downside is 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 the overall fatigue that both of these drugs are likely to to cause. Now you mentioned CoQ10 as a way of increasing oxidative metabolism. This will increase energy across the board. It's not going to change the uh, the symptoms of uh, calcium uh, release uh, caused by the statins. It's not going to change the amount of uh, sugar uh, being released, but the sugar you have will burn more efficiently if you have all the enzymes you need, and CoQ10, CoQ10 is one of them. So you'll 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 be burning that sugar more efficiently, which is which is good, presumably. Um, but uh, there are other things that uh, uh, metformin will do. It actually interferes with uh, B vitamin uptake and formation. Uh, and so if you start um, lowering, uh, particularly B12, this also is going to make you tired. B12 is necessary for, again, um, I, well, it's all about your energy system, but B12 is involved with hemoglobin. Mm -hmm. So 
B12 is involving where you get the oxygen to burn the sugar to make mm -hmm. the energy. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't have enough B12, uh, you're going to start you're going to start having uh, less oxygen in your system uh, with which to burn that sugar. If you end up with very low B12, and this does can, this can happen from metformin, you can end up uh, with anemia. You actually don't have enough red blood cells in your body. So the weakness can be really pervasive and, and progressive. Uh, so you'll start off fine, but over the years, as you're uh, you know, getting older and everything is not working as well, your B12 is going to be going down and down and down and down and down. So um, one thing you might consider, again, talk to your doctor, is a B12 supplement. Um, when people have a uh, low B12 uh, from, uh, from metformin, they recommend um, something like 2,000, I can't remember what the dosage thing, it's not milligrams, it's definitely not it's milligrams. It's micrograms. Yeah, I think it's micrograms, it's MCG, but they, yeah. but they're, I, MCG is not microgram? It probably is, I'm just used to like scientific notation for a microgram, which is the, the Greek letter mu followed by a G. You can't put that on a vitamin bottle. Exactly, so anyway, so it's MCGs, so I think it's micrograms, but uh, I didn't actually look that, that one thing up. I, I said, that's probably micrograms. It does say MCG, that I know. But yeah, anyway, so, um, if you have low, if you have uh, low B12, they recommend between one and two thousand uh, to bring it back up, and then one thousand micrograms as a steady dose to keep your energy there. So it sort of gives you an, a rough idea of these things. These are these are um, dietary supplements, so they're not prescription. Uh, B12 will help anyone get a little bit more energy. It's it's something that they put in energy drinks. It's something that they recommend for energy. Uh, why is it doing that? Because it's going to increase your uh, red blood cell count. Uh, and it's going to increase your ability to take in oxygen. Is an increase in red blood cell count always a positive thing? Uh, there's, I don't think of any way it can be bad. I mean, there's obviously there's going to be some sort of limit, but, but I don't know what you, that it'll, upper it'll limit make is. You feel like less short of breath. You're going to, you're going to feel like someone who's had more training, right? You're going to feel, because what does exercise do? It increases your red blood cell count. So it's going to, it's going to give you more energy. It's going to, it's going to increase how much oxygen goes into your body. You're going to just have more stamina, et cetera. And, 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 and B12 can help with all of that, you know, up to a point. Once you've saturated the system, you're not going to keep making more and more uh, red blood cell as you increase yeah, the dosage. I, I've also read that, uh, that B12 is water soluble, like, like vitamin C, and therefore what, what, what's not necessary in the body just washes away. I'm not sure about its water solubility. I, I didn't look into that in particular, but that's true of a lot of these supplements yeah. is, is that it will just wash away. CoQ10, same thing. Yeah. Uh, even if it's not water soluble, your, your, your body can't use right. the excess you're taking. Um, it's not, it's not like, uh, you know, vitamin A in a polar bear liver that's going to murder you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, the, 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 these are, you know, vitamins that within the range you're taking them are probably not dangerous. Yeah. Uh, but also like vitamin C, you probably already have enough most of the time if you're living a normal life. You don't need extras. I'm saying things that because you're on these medications and you start feeling a little tiredness, this might be a way you can approach the issue. Um, there was one last thing I wanted to mention about uh, the uh, the metformin. Um, I, I, so I, I want to stay focused on this. Yeah. I just want to ask, uh, I also read that metformin also... Uh, uh, improves the, the, the health of the... Yeah, we were just getting to that. Okay, okay. That was okay. my last thing. Forgive me. I, we're on the same... same yeah, exactly. Anyway, yeah, yeah. So, so, so microbiome stuff. Um, if you're not absorbing all of that sugar, that sugar is still in your gut. And yes. so you actually end up with more bacteria in your gut. Now, this can be good mm -hmm. and or bad. Mostly mm -hmm. good, but it can be bad. So... Uh, Probiotics in general are good for you. Probiotics in general increase the amount of bacteria in your gut. Um, the makeup of your microflora really matters. You, diversity, all of these things matter. So if you are eating lots of sugar and taking metformin, I suspect that's going to lead you towards bad microflora because you're going to have just an excess of sugar in your gut. However, if you have a sort of normal healthy diet, Let's say you're eating a Mediterranean diet, sort of the, the optimal diet that you as an American can eat because you're not eating raw roots. Um, you're going to have relatively low amounts of, uh, uh, of uh, sugar coming in because most of the sugars you eat are going to be complex forms uh, from vegetables or whole grains. Uh, this is then going to keep a nice steady supply of food for your gut. And you're just going to slightly increase that supply with the metformin because you're not absorbing as much sugar. And so you're not going to send your whole microflora out of whack. However, the microflora that are there 
are going to end up um, being the ones that normally eat indigestible sugars. And so these are the ones that often specialize in uh, the soluble fibers. And so these are the ones that you actually want because soluble fiber is something that increases uh, diversity of your microflora, microflora and tends to increase uh, health across the board. Uh, particularly uh, with the uh, chemical butyrate, which I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. I, I did a little bit of research on butyrate. It's, it's a fascinating thing. Uh, we get it literally from butter. Uh, it's, it's where we get the word uh, from butter to butyrate. It's from the Greek word butyr, butter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's, it's the smell of butter. It's actually the smell of rancid butter. Uh, and um, it, it uh, is a... A uh, molecule that your stomach actually needs. I'm not saying you should now go on a butter only diet. I'm just saying that it is something that you need uh, in 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 the right amounts, and we often don't have the right amounts, um, partly because it's 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 absorbed before it gets to where it needs to be. Even if you eat butter, you might not have enough butyrate. You, it might not get to where it needs to be the butyrate. Uh, your low your lower intestine needs butyrate to live. It's uh, one of the energy molecules that your intestinal um, uh, cells actually take up. If you starve them of butyrate, you will start damaging your intestine. You'll actually, uh, your, your intestine itself will start to decay and, 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 and not work as well. These are, these are the, 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 the things related to irritable bowel syndrome and all these other things. So how do I get butyrate there if eating it doesn't do it? Uh, fiber. I mean, this, you always knew uh, fiber was good for your intestines. This is yeah, one yeah, of yeah. the reasons why. It's not just the pass-through rate. It's actually feeding your intestine. And you can... Soluble fiber, not the insoluble fiber, because there's both kinds. They're, they're different. Both kinds are important, but the sugars that get to your lower intestines are the ones you haven't absorbed, and that the, the, the bacteria Therefore, can... The, the, right. This is non-digestible, meaning it gets there. It gets there, exactly. Right, right. And so sugars, fermentable sugars is what they call them. Why is something I can't digest important and good for me? Particularly for your stomach, oh, no, no, your there's intestine. Things living inside me that need it. Um, well, and that and the and the things they produce, you need. So it produces something in your lower intestine that keeps your lower intestine alive. Without it, your lower intestine is going to suffer. So the and can actually be starved. Soluble fiber that gets down to your lower intestine feeds the critters that live down there, and then part of what they excrete is the butyrate that the butyrate that your body needs, that your intestines need. Exactly. It's a symbiotic relationship. Absolutely, it's a symbiotic relationship. And we need to feed them fiber. Uh, and, it's, and, it, and, it's, and it's larger than that in that um, the butyrate, which we talked about um, in uh, some other uh, talks, uh, also um, reduces uh, the um, DNA binding to the histone proteins. And so you're going to increase uh, DNA expression. Uh, so butyrate is actually going to allow the DNA to be copied better uh, because it's more accessible to your body. And so uh, it's going to reduce aging in that sense. A lot of aging is either caused by glucose burning things or by uh, your DNA no longer expressing all the things it needs to express properly, which is why everything stops so working as well. So that you can't heal yourself, so that you can't remake yourself. Everything, so you... everything across the board is why everything starts going worse when you hit 50. Wow. Uh, and so fiber is literally at the foundation of what makes this possible. Yes. And so uh, one of the reasons that uh, metformin is now being seen as this sort of off-label um, uh, way to extend your life uh, is it has so many side benefits. Uh, it may be directly anti-aging in this sense. It may be indirectly anti-aging by lowering the glucose. Uh, it's going to help you lose weight, which you know is going to be good for you. Uh, and so it's going to work really well. Doesn't it also improve the endothelium? Didn't didn't that? I think I read that somewhere that it also. It may. I, I haven't read that or not read yeah, that. I yeah, I think that both metformin and and I did not know about statins. Maybe I'm confused. I have to go back. Anyway, go on. Yeah. So anyway, so the 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 the, the metformin is going to um, increase your 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 intestinal health, uh, and it's going to be um, then causing connections between um, the vagus nerve which collect, connects to your lower intestine as well as everything else in your yeah. body and your brain directly. So now you're going where I was going to ask about, which is now the, 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 the gut brain connection the that gut -brain we've been connection. talking exactly. about is directly affected and improved by absolutely fiber, which feeds that 
so 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 when you have this increased amount of butyrate and other bacteria in your lower intestine because now these are very happy bacteria they're telling your vagus nerve that they're happy and that they're getting what they need and that vagus nerve then goes to your brain and says everything's a-okay so you get increased dopamine you get increased serotonin your mood improves and so you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna feel happier um all, all of these things are going to improve so I just want to want to, want to finish with so the basic takeaway for both of these things is possible fatigue. Uh, the basic takeaway for the fatigue is you can treat uh, deficiencies uh, either with enzymes or vitamin B12. Uh, but overall, the combination of statins and metformin are going to uh, increase your um, your your quality of life, uh, your overall lifespan. Uh, and uh, generally uh, work together to uh, improve uh, your, your, your oxidative metabolism overall uh, for sort of how, how you deal with things. You're going to need to, to help it along because you're, you're, you're actually lowering some of the, the, the feedstock for it, right? You're, you're getting less glucose into the system uh, and you're possibly lowering the, uh, the vitamin B12, which makes the, you know, the oxygen come in with the hemoglobin. So if you, if you can stay on top of the, that side of things, uh, you will really uh, Im improve your overall quality of life, in my opinion. Better life through pharmacology. Absolutely. And, and these things, you know, you'd want to start slow and then build it up. Keep an eye on, on, on your, your, your um, blood levels of glucose and, and, and cholesterol, etc. Uh, but uh, they, they really do seem to uh, have the ability to uh, um, keep your heart working well, uh, keep your blood pressure down. Uh, keep your weight down, right? That, there, there's, a, yeah. there's a straight yeah. ahead uh, sort of aesthetic value there. Uh, and, uh, you know, gen generally, even up to including improving your mood. That's, it's just crazy. I think, I think you know, the one thing that, that in my mind connects to all of this, but is a whole episode unto itself, if it's something you want to undertake, is this really connects to the whole world of probiotics, which there's no real science. Yeah. Um, four. I don't know if you want to go there because there's no science. No, I don't. That. I don't really want to. But I did want to mention that both of these work better with a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. So, so again, to stop the muscle cramps, exercise. Don't exercise if you have no muscles whatsoever. You're just going to make things worse because now you've built up lactic acid, etc. It's going to make the muscle cramps worse. But if if you can start slow, work up. You're going to keep pumping out all, all, all of those toxins. Same thing with the sugar. Um, sugar can start building the wrong kind of microflora in your stomach. You're going to get too much of the wrong things and not enough of the good things. So watch your sugar intake. Eat more of the complex carbohydrates. The same things you should have been doing to stop having to take metformin in the first place, but it's going to be uh, slightly more important now because if you eat a lot of sugar, it's going to go directly uh, to those bacteria because you're not able to take it out of your stomach as well. Or, so, sorry, your so, intestines so, as well. So, so then, uh, you know, walking down the street with my kid, I'm doing my best to, to, to live, you know, the best lifestyle I can. I've actually cut dessert out, don't have sugar in my coffee, all the rest. Most of my refined sugar is gone, but whenever the kids have an ice cream, I want a bite. Like, I don't have a whole ice cream. At what point does it become crossing a line? Like, I, it's so There's hard no to way act. to know. Exactly. There's it's no so way to know. It's so hard to judge on a day-to-day yeah. -day lifestyle. You don't want to be Puritan about it and cut it out completely because where's the fun in that? But on the other hand, when do you know that you're making a negative difference or not? I mean, you should be able to feel it, right? If you eat enough sugar to get the insulin spike and crash and you feel really tired and you get a headache, that was too much. <laughs> Uh, you know, this, 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 this. I'd like to know before I hit that. Yeah, well, you kind of do. Yeah. Uh, you know, the same same thing for, um, you know, think about what happens when you start getting too much uh, bad bacteria in your stomach. Some of that you might not notice right away. It could be affecting your mood with insulin spikes, et cetera. It could be affecting all sorts of things. But the first thing you're going to start noticing is, you know, bloating and gas. Yeah. Uh, and, and you're going to have all those bacteria in your stomach producing gas. That would be an indication that you'd gone too far. Uh, so, you know, these are, these, these are, these are ways where you can start thinking about your own lifestyle, you know, taking, taking the medications that your doctor recommends, but then trying to understand what they are doing so you can make yourself have sort of the, you know, the, the optimal, uh, 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 life where you have energy, you have, uh, you have, you know, the ability to eat what you want, um, up to a point. Within reason. Uh, yeah. yeah. And you and you and you and you have enough and you have enough energy to keep the exercise going, so you can ma maintain a healthy lifestyle.
Fascinating and 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 uh, very personal. <laughs> because Absolutely, these are drugs that I am actually. Yeah, well, actually we we, we hit fifty a while yes. ago, so this is this is the line we've crossed. It's yes. Happening. All right. Well, thank you so much, Josh. I think uh, I think I, I hope that we can uh, keep coming back to these. I know that we've had a lot of recurring themes, but uh, this is very real. So yeah, thank well, you. Thank you so much. All right. Till next time, folks.